System recovery. We're going to recover the refrigerant from this system in any condition and store it in this recovery tank. The method we're going to do today is going to be actually the slowest possible method, but it's also your most commonly used method. So we're going to start with this method. So when you see it, you know what's happening, you know what's going on with it, but know that in future videos, we're going to add faster and faster ways to speed this process up. We're going to start with our recovery tank. We've already used the HVAC school app to make sure this tank has plenty of room. And actually the tear weight of this tank matches what the tank weighs. So we know there's no additional refrigerant in there. So we're good to go in that point. We also have a recovery machine. It's important to read the instructions on your recovery machine. You can do a PDF search for the model number of your machine and find out what you're using and find the instructions and follow those instructions. Ironically, the method we're gonna be using goes against the recommendations in this recovery machine. So this is not my recommended method. However, I do wanna show you the most used method. For safety, I have safety glasses on, but in the field, I'm not gonna be wearing safety glasses, but we're usually doing this outside, so I typically have sunglasses on to protect that. And on the note of gloves, make sure if you're gonna be using gloves, it's a non-absorbent glove. If it absorbs any kind of liquid, it will also be able to absorb liquid refrigerant. I personally don't like gloves, but it's not an official recommendation. Officially, it would be the thick butyline gloves. <laughs> Those things are so thick it's hard to work with. But whatever you do, don't use a glove that absorbs refrigerant. And again, the two finger rule, so if you're taking hoses on and off, you don't get anything behind or in front of your hands to where refrigerant will stay away from your fingers and your hands and you really won't have an issue. For this example, we have R22 in the system and our gauges are already hooked up and pre-purged. So all we really need to do is pull the refrigerant from the unit through the hoses to our manifold gauge set, from the center hose or service hose into the machine, pump it out of the machine into our recovery tank. So to do that, let's follow these steps. We already have our manifold gauge set hooked up. So we have our center hose, our service hose with our low loss fitting. We're gonna hook that to the in port of our recovery machine. And notice where it says in, we also have this filter dryer right here. This is gonna help protect and clean the refrigerant as it goes into the machine. And even if I'm not going to recycle this refrigerant, the fact that it's protecting my machine is an important step. So we're gonna hook this up with our two finger rule. Now we want to go out of our machine to our recovery tank. So we're going to need an additional hose. So in this hose, we have two ends. We have our end with our automatic low loss fitting. This side with no fancy fitting is the side that typically goes on a manifold gauge set. So we're going to put the low loss fitting on the machine where it says out. Now the side that normally goes on a manifold gauge set, that we're going to hook on this side of our tank that says vapor. So I'm going to read on here and see which side says vapor. Don't go by colors. Vapor, two fingers, and I'm just going to leave this one loose. So everything's tight except this connection is loose. My tank is still closed. All the valves are closed in my tank, but the hose itself is still loose. I go to my recovery machine, and in this case, I'm going to open both of the valves on my recovery machine. Some of the other equipment you work with may have a purge knob, and you would want to turn it to the purge knob. So we're hooked up, but the problem is in these hoses, we have dirty, nasty, polluted air. So we want to purge or push you know, those contaminants out of these hoses. So we only get the pure, clean refrigerant into a recovery tank. To do that, we're going to push it out of this machine, through the hoses to our manifold gate set, through our center hose, into our machine, out of our machine, all the way to this tank to where it's going to be leaking at this point. There's many ways of doing this. Some people prefer to purge each hose individually. In this example, we're going to purge the whole entire system at once. Now when I purge, I can open up the high side or I can open up the low side. I don't particularly like to purge with liquid refrigerant because now we're having a large volume of refrigerant and that liquid refrigerant can potentially mix with the vapors and not give us a good of a purge. And it's also more dangerous having that liquid refrigerant come out. So I like to purge with the vapor side. So by purging with the vapor side, I'm just going to open this connection. The refrigerant is going to flow through this yellow hose into the machine, through the machine, out of the machine and start leaking or purging at this connection. When I do this, it's going to be quite fast, but here we go. That's it, we've purged the system. Notice the higher pressure pushed through my machine, out of my machine, and pushed all the contaminants out at this point. And then all I had to do was use the two finger rule and simply tighten this connection up. Because there's no liquid refrigerant, there's no refrigerant changing state, and it's not burning or damaging my hands. So it's a very quick and easy way of doing that. And again, I used the two finger rule to where if refrigerant did come out in liquid form, it would be spraying backwards or forwards and away from my hand. If you try cupping your hand against that connection, you're looking at a frostbite scenario, which we don't want to have. 
Now that I have the refrigerant purged, what I want to do is take my scale and I'm going to turn it on and zero it out. So I've zeroed and teared it out. So now we can measure how much refrigerant we're going to put into this tank. We're ready to start a recovery. And again, you want to follow the manufactured recommendation. In this example, I have my manifold gauge set closed off. Both of my valves are open here and my tank is closed. So the only thing open is going to be my recovery machine itself. If yours has a single knob, turn it to where it says recovery. So in this example, we have both of these valves closed. My tank valve is closed closed and it's open at the machine. There's many different opinions on which way we're going to do this. But for this example, we're going to turn the machine on first, immediately open up the valve into the tank, and then immediately open up the suction side and also the liquid side. Now there's lots of opinions on how to do that. The reason I'm doing it this way is because if there was a lot of pressure in the tank that's pushing against the pump and makes it hard for this pump to start up. So I like to start the pump off and then immediately open this valve. That way I'm not having back pressure on the pump when it's trying to start. I like to open the vapor valve first so it's easier on the compressor before it gets pumping and then also open up the liquid valve. Now it's faster if you open up the liquid first and pull liquid refrigerant, but again, this is the slowest possible method. So we're just gonna skip that step altogether. So when I do this, it's gonna happen pretty quickly. And again, we're gonna turn the machine on, open this valve and then open these valves. So here we go. So it took a considerable amount of time just to pull out a little over five pounds of refrigerant doing it by this method. And it's still the most commonly used method. So we've pulled the refrigerant out, but if you notice on the compressor side, we have ice forming at the bottom of that compressor. What that tells me is we're pulling that liquid refrigerant out of that oil. And as the refrigerant changes state from a liquid vapor, it absorbs heat. It's absorbing heat from the casing of that compressor and it's below the dew point, below the freezing point, and we're actually causing frost to be on there. So there's still refrigerant inside the system. Now we're below the EPA required levels for recovery. What's gonna happen is over time, as that compressor starts to heat back up, that refrigerant will start boiling out of that oil and we're gonna have refrigerant coming out of that line. So depending on what we're doing with the system, it could be an issue. The the reason we're concerned about that is as we start brazing on this system and heating it up, that refrigerator is going to come across that braze or that torch and it's going to turn into a toxic gas for us to breathe. And we typically don't want that to happen. But you can see this is the basic side of the recovery. Now that we're done with the recovery, let's go ahead and follow a few more examples. Now here you notice I shut the machine off first and the instructions for this machine, it says shut the machine off before you do anything else. And it's able to hold the pressure, the highest side on this side and the low side here. But if I was to try to restart this machine, it'd be very hard on it trying to pump against the high pressure here and pull on that suction side on the other side. It would be a lot of stress against it. So we don't want to shut this machine off and then start it back up again. So I'm going to close the valve. I'm going to close the high pressure valve on my recovery machine. And then I'm going to take loose this connection on the output side. Now it's a low loss fitting. I'm going to use two fingers only. And there's just a little de minimis squirt of refrigerant. 
However, inside of this hose is still liquid refrigerant. So what we're gonna do is leave this hose up high somewhere so it allow that refrigerant to very slowly drip into this tank. It's not gonna drain in, it's gonna drip in. Remember we have up to the vapor port so that refrigerant can simply start dripping back in. So if I leave this up high somewhere, it'll start that process. Again, this valve I'm leaving open to allow that refrigerant to start dripping back in. I'm done with the suction side so I can close off these valves. I can also close off my suction valve, take my hose off, put my valve caps back on, take my recovery machine back to the truck, or if I have another tank of refrigerant I need to recover, I can hook that up at the same time and go ahead and pull that last little bit of refrigerant out. But this is our basic recovery. It is the slowest possible option, but it is one of the most commonly used. Next, let's talk about ways we're going to speed this process up.